Hey guys, I'm Bella, the Maker Mama Boss Lady behind Fiber and Fox, and I'm here today, finally, 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 with another pattern drop for you. I'm going to be talking about the green bow shawl today. This one's been in the works for quite a bit, so I'm very excited to have it out to you guys finally. Um, everything that you're going to need to know about the shawl, as well as where to find me, is going to be linked down below this video in either show more, the little down bar, triangle doodad, and yeah, there's going to be a blog post that goes along with the shawl design. It's going to give you basically all the info I'm talking about here and more, as well as links to the shops where you can find it, all of that, all the yarns I'm going to talk about, tester photos, and just all the goodness. So make sure you check out that post if you have any additional questions after what I'm about to tell you. That being said, let's get into the rainbow shawl. I always like to give a little bit of backstory or inspiration with all of my designs. Some of them carry a lot more weight and inspiration than others, like the Hope in a Future Wrap is probably my most meaningful design. And then there's some that are kind of just fun. This one's um, more of a stash dive project, yarns that I just wanted to use together because they looked pretty. Um, so no huge inspiration. Um, if you've been around for any length of time, you probably know I like stuff in a rainbow order. I, it's just how the world makes sense to me. Um, this yarn here is not a rainbow order because it's all like saturated neutrals. Um, but this whole dresser is all in rainbow order. My closet's in rainbow order. All of my books, my notebooks, this, all of my stuff is always in rainbow order because that's how I like the world, um, and have for as long as I can remember. Um, but also the rainbow for me uh, has a little extra meaning. I like to, uh, not only do I like this color combo, do I think it looks awesome, but the rainbow for me is a reminder of God's faithfulness and promises and graciousness to me um, in times where stuff looks a little dark, a little gray. So the rainbow is a little peak of um, God's goodness in dark times. Uh, if you want to hear more about the whole rainbow and um, gray, inspiration definitely check out the hope in a future wrap because that one's like i said a lot more meaningful but yeah i struggle with anxiety and it's always a good reminder for me to be able to look down and be like oh yeah god's still faithful um so that's kind of the inspiration behind this but also i just thought it looked real pretty and i had these in stash and wanted to make a shawl so that's how the rainbow shawl came to be it is a asymmetrical um or boomerang type shape triangle shawl. I'll take it off and show you. We'll make sure there's lots of pictures throughout um, so you get a good idea how it looks, but it is worked from the small end here. So from this end, uh, it is worked, oh, there's still a stitch marker on there. <laughs> it is worked, do, 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 do. Do, 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 And I should mention, in case you're wondering what rainbow is and you haven't picked up on it by now, it's gray plus rainbow equals rainbow. It's a word I made up. I'm petitioning that it be an actual word because I think it's great. So yeah, it works out to a much wider end and kind of does a whoop shape. Boomerang, I guess. And this is how um, I'm wearing mine. I have a reel up on Instagram as well if you need a little more tutorial help on how to wear it, but I'm wrapping this end around the back then taking the long end here. Do, 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 do. It's stuck under me. Sticking it under and then flipping this back over here fluffing it out pretty, and shazam, we're wearing the rainbow shawl. <laughs> so that is the inspiration and the look behind it. Let's get into some of the other details. Yarn and material wise, this one wasn't a collaboration or anything. Like I said, it was some stash. Um, the gray was actually left over from a collaboration with Treasure Goddess Yarns, um, my Anuk pullover, which I'll link for you guys as well. Um, I had a couple skeins left over and I asked if she would be okay if I did something else with them. She was like, yeah, sure. Um, so those are Ghost Ship uh, from Treasure Goddess Yarns. And then the others were all minis. My thought with this design is I've been really into minis lately um, that you could use obviously 20 gram minis with this or um, like Advent skein minis if you have some of those in your stash. Or you could use scraps as well. You don't necessarily have to have mini skeins. You can use 20 gram amounts of scraps. Um, but it is, I should say, a fingering weight design. Um, so it is fingering weight, sock yarn, weight one, extra, super fine, whatever, um, tiny yarn. But I just love the, the drape and the feel and the weight of it. Um, all of the colors I, I used are superwash, um, merino nylon blends, but you could sub in whatever works for you. Just make sure you do your blocking and swatching and all of that to make sure it's going to work out in the overall design. But the other colors that I used, um, this one red one, 
was from a chick that knits who is a dyer that I found through like an Instagram ad. Not super familiar with her yarn at all because I think this is the only yarn I've used is this 120 gram mini skein. Um, and then all the other minis are from Lane and Lotus. So basically for the design, um, you're going to need about one and a half um, 100 gram skeins of the main color, color A, so the gray. Um, so it's a two skein project, but you're not going to use the entirety of the two skeins. It's about one and a half skeins um, at most. Um, I think for the way I did it with the contrast, I don't know if you can tell because it doesn't pick up super, super well on camera, but this is a different color than the main gray. Um, this is another seventh mini skein. You could definitely do the design with six mini skeins and then use the main color for the edging, but I liked the contrast and I had the extra mini skein in my stash. But some testers did it um, just using the main main gray or background color um, for the edging as well, but you're going to need about 615 or so yards of your color A main color um, that's without doing, with the that is with the contrast edging. If you want to use your main color for the contrast, I think that puts you at about 660 yards, um, but that's still well within your two skein realm. So if you can find a dyer that has 50 gram skeins, you could do one full skein and a 50 gram skein, or you could stash dye for some remnant. Um, but yes, you can get away with well under two skeins on the main color. And then all of the minis are 20 grams. I think they were about 90 yards each. Um, and yeah, you just need one mini of each color for all the stripes. So that's material wise what you're going to need. Nothing super complicated. Uh, I did use a G four millimeter, uh, crochet hook, but please make sure that you gauge swatch because you don't want to be playing yarn chicken with your 20 gram minis and you want to make sure you have enough left over to do all of your stripes and then get to this lovely bit at the end because it would be so sad if you didn't have that part. Um, so that is what you need to make the shawl. I also always like to give you guys an idea of what's included in the shawl pattern. Um, so you're obviously going to get the full written crochet US terms pattern. There's lots of photos in there as far as it being modeled and also to, also it held out open. So if you're not clear on what the shape um, is going to look like or if you're on the right track, photos in there of that. There's photos um, that go along with this uh, border a bit and then some up close photos of this edging as well. Um, honestly, the most complicated part of the whole shawl is probably this border and this edging, and I use complicated very loosely because this is definitely an advanced beginner um, shawl design. Um, maybe the most fiddly bit is the fact you're working with fingering weight yarn if you're not used to that, but if you are, it's going to be a breeze, and even if you're not, it's just smaller yarn and a smaller hook. It's not harder, it's just smaller. Um, all the main stitches, this is just single crochet in here, and then this is a variation on sin single crochet, so all the mini stripes are in this different texture, and then just single crochet in the main color. So nothing tricky there, and you're just doing basic um, increases and decreases along the edge to create the shape. Really basic, really simple, really repetitive. And I have made sure um, it's something that's been very popular with my other shawl designs as well to include, um, I have a row by row kind of like spreadsheet, um, separate PDF that has row by row stitch counts. So the main pattern is going to give you like how many stitches you have at the beginning and end of a section, but I have an entire spreadsheet row by row, every single number that you need in case you get lost somewhere in here and you're like, oh, I have an extra stitch. Oh, I don't have enough stitches. Where did I go wrong? How many am I supposed to have? You definitely don't need to count every row. Once you get the main increase, decrease pattern down, it's the same throughout. Um, but if you need to double check your row or stitch count, I've got that for you. And along with that, there's also um, some options for coloring in if you wanted to highlight or take a colored pencil and color in that spreadsheet to give you a visual of how your stripes are gonna lay out. You can do that as well. And within the pattern too, there's some little squares for coloring in um, next to like color A, color B. So you can kind of assign a color to the letters. That's really helpful for me. I'm very visual and when people are like, use color G, I'm like, I don't remember what that was. So the coloring is super helpful. Um, there's no videos along with this one. A lot of times I do have video tutorials along with my patterns, but like I said, it's very basic, very straightforward. And I don't think there's going to be any parts where you're going to get um, stuck. I'm always here to help uh, via email and whatnot, but it is a very straightforward pattern, I think. Um, there are videos in there as far as how to wet block and how to add projects to Ravelry, but there are no um, like direct pattern tutorials for this one because it's just, it's a simple little guy. And I think the stripes just really make a big statement and there was nothing that needed to be complicated in it. My favorite part is always including um, some tester inspiration for you guys. So I'm going to put in some photos here of my group of testers. I gave them free range as far as whether or not they wanted to do rainbow 
or completely different, um, which I think is really helpful because I know not everybody's going to want a rainbow shawl. What's wrong with you? But no, seriously, um, just because I love things rainbow doesn't mean you do, but you could definitely do this in any stripe color combination that you liked. Um, and like I said, it's great for stash or advents. Um, so you could even do like a fade or something if you wanted to get really complicated. Not complicated, but you know, branch out of the rainbow box. Um, and I did have uh, Christine of Treasure Goddess, who is the dyer behind the main gray color that I use, um, had reached out and wanted to test. So she made a version um, in all her yarns. And I think it's on a merino yak base. It's kind of fancy. I know she's going to be using it as a sample for shows and selling the pattern in person, but I think she's also going to have kits on her website. So keep an eye out um, on the Treasure Goddess feed uh, for that and see if you can snag a kit if you want to make yourself a fancy yak one. And then I also had, um, not the dyer herself, but Nia of Crochet Cove had um, one of her sample makers test as well. So Kimora made a version in all of Nia's yarns. And I'm not sure she's going to be assembling actual kits. I know she's going to be using it as a show sample, but um, if you wanted to recreate the one that Kimora made, you can also jump over to the Crochet Cove and shop her yarns for that. Um, and then I did have a couple testers that went totally outside of the rainbow box, which was a fabulous. Um, I had one other rainbow one that I really like the more solid look of it, that, like not the shawl itself, but the colors that she chose. Um, and they were like a really specialty yarn um, from where, I think Australia somewhere, um, but really beautiful yarns. But I, I liked the way that it looked because it doesn't necessarily scream indie dyed. I think all of my testers did use indie dyed or like smaller produced yarns, but I always want to encourage you guys that you don't have to use indie dyed yarns. It's something that I really love and I love supporting um, small indie dyers and small businesses, women owned businesses, all of that. But if that's not within your budget or um, just reasonable for you right now, you can absolutely sub in a more commercially available yarn. Um, like I know wool like um, from Loops and Threads from by Michaels is like two, three dollars a skein and they have a great um, fingering weight range in colors. So you could definitely do that in the shawl as well if you wanted to. And then testers also did like completely non-rainbow versions and I loved them. Uh, I like the speckles that kind of, it was not really a fade, but kind of like a more subtle color range rather than really poppy um, contrast colors. And then yeah, you can just really go completely non-rainbow if you wanted to. <laughs> I think any stripe combo is going to look awesome. I'd love to see one with like uh, a really dark like black or almost white background, like really contrasty. I'd love to see one in neon. I'd love to see some variegated things in there. Just make sure you tag me in all of these because I want to see your versions and share them as well. Um, and if you didn't get enough inspiration from the tester photos I've put in here, go check out that blog post and definitely check out the Ravelry pages as well. Um, and especially in the future, I'm sure people will have added more Ravelry pages. So always check that out if you need a little more color inspiration and don't limit yourself to just rainbow or just the colors I picked. Use your creativity because I love that. Lastly, I always like to include a little exclusive discount um, with the launch of the pattern. So the pattern is launching July 2nd, 2021, and through July 9th, 2021, I'm going to be doing a discount over on Ravelry. If Ravelry is an issue for you accessibility-wise, let me know. I just don't do um, sales on Etsy usually because they do already take a larger cut than Ravelry does from designers. Um, but if Rav's an issue, let me know and I'll work it out for you. But um, through the 9th, you can get 10% off the pattern on Ravelry with the code Chasing Rainbows. I'm going to put that on the screen here in case you are unfamiliar with how to spell rainbows being as it is a word that I made up. That sentence may have been questionable, but we're going with it. Um, so Chasing Rainbows, 10% off the pattern. And yeah, just make sure that if you get it, you tag me fiber.and.fox on Instagram and use hashtag greenbowshawl as well because I'd love to see your versions. Thank you so very much for your support. Thank you for watching these videos. That's a great way to support me as well. But if you purchase the design or plan to, I really appreciate that. I really love doing what I do and being able to stay home and be a mama and make beautiful things. So thank you for supporting that and I hope that you love the rainbow shawl as much as I do. Happy making. Bye.